community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Please pray with me. Gracious God, grant us uh, wisdom, grant us knowledge, grant us your inspiration that even as we minister your word, your people will gain understanding and that our lives will be blessed. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, I found this the other day on uh, one of the uh, pastor's manual and uh, it, I thought it was very interesting. And this is how the story goes. Out west, the cowboy was driving on a very dirt road. His dog in the back of the pickup truck and his faithful horse in the trailer behind. Now he failed to negotiate a curve and had a terrible accident. So sometime later, a highway patrol officer came on the scene. An animal lover himself, he saw the horse first. Realizing how serious the nature of his injuries, he drew his service revolver and put the animal out of his misery. He walked around the accident and found the dog also hurt so badly. He couldn't bear to hear it whine in pain. So he ended the dog's suffering as well. Finally, he located the cowboy who suffered multiple fractures off in the weeds. Hey, are you okay? The cop asked. The cowboy took one look at the smoking revolver in the trooper's hand and quickly replied, never felt better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mark Twain, he said, don't complain and talk about all your problems because 80% don't care and 20% think that you deserve them anyway. <laughs> There was a monk who took um, a vow of sil and silence. So he went to a monastery, and in this monastery, you take a vow of silence. So, but you have an opportunity, you know, maybe if five years or however the time, you can come and say something that, you know, about your experience. So five years, he was in silence. He went to his supervisor, and the supervisor asked him, do you have anything to say? He said, the food is terrible. Okay, he went back into his silence. After another five years, he came back, said the bed is too hard. Another five years, he came to his supervisor, said, do you have anything to say? He said, I quit. The supervisor looks at him and is like, I'm not surprised. You've been complaining all the time since you got here. <laughs> dissatisfaction or resentment. You know, there are synonyms. And as those of you who are more like uh, English uh, people, you know synonyms and antonyms, you know, or words and their opposites. So the synonyms for complaining is being grouchy or gripey or memory or, or grumbling. And the opposite of that is being content, satisfied, happy. 
So you can have people who are in, in different camps. And that happened to the people of Israel. They were in two camps. The camp of grouchiness, the camp of complainers, and the camp of people who grumble all the time. So we should ask ourselves, which camp are we in? Because, you know, when we read the Bible, God wants us to see ourselves in the characters of the story. You see what I mean? And the Bible says, the people complained and they displeased God. They made God uncomfortable. And the Bible says that his anger was kindled against them. The people were bemoaning about their lot. And that roused the anger of God when he heard it. God does not appreciate when his people are constantly complaining about their life. Eventually, God will respond in some fashion or another. There is a natural tendency for people to complain when things aren't going right for them. They complain because they feel that they deserve more. They feel that they have to be treated in a special way and they have to get their way all the time, so they make those complaints. You know, the Israelites were like spoiled children who kept demanding and demanding and demanding. And when you see spoiled children, they may have thousands and thousands of toys, or their parents may have provided everything they needed, but they keep asking for more because they feel entitled, they feel that if they complain or say out loud, and bother and nag everybody, then they're going to get what they want. We've got to learn how to shut down this grouchy attitude before it destroys our lives. There's so many examples in the Old Testament. First, the Israelites, they complain. You know, in Exodus chapter 15, the Israelites, they complain about the water. They said the water was too bitter. And God changed the water and made it sweet. <laughs> and meanwhile, God had intended to make the water sweet anyway, but they complained about it, and God gave them back, you know, sweet waters. They also continued. They complained. They said, well, now you brought us out of Egypt, and now we are starving in this wilderness. We're starving in this desert. God opened the heavens. And he himself made the angels, turned them into chefs to prepare meals for them called manna heavenly meals to be brought at their disposal to eat. And when they finish eating the manna, they still complain. And in this chapter, they are complaining about water. They said, we don't, we are thirsty. Now, does this sound familiar? They were feeling sorry for themselves and continued to complain and complain. So the Lord heard the cry and he said, okay, Moses, do something about it. Do something. You know how soon people forget sometimes? You realize how sometimes we forget the things we've done for people and maybe there's one need or there's something they want, and they forget everything that has happened in their lives. <clears throat> the Israelites had a tendency to complain. They had a spirit of ingratitude. They forgot all the miracles that God has done for them. If you read the story of the Israelites in the book of Exodus, God, by a mighty hand, had delivered the Israelites from, from bondage. They were slaves. Being oppressed, being beaten every day. And God sent Moses, as we read in the book of Malachi, to deliver them. And every um, thing that God did was a miracle to deliver them. The Bible said he gave ten plagues in Egypt. On the land that he told them to slaughter a lamb and to put the blood on the doorpost to enjoy the Passover meal. And after the Passover meal, he said they should leave Egypt. And when they were leaving Egypt, they were cornered in every side. There were mountains on every side. And behind them were the Egyptians who were going to murder them. And God said to Moses, you know, just stretch forth your hand on the wall, you know, stretch that across the Red Sea. And the Red Sea was divided into a dry land. And they went through the Red Sea as if it was on a dry land. When the Egyptians were coming, 
they drowned. The Bible said, God himself led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God was working miracles every day. Every day God was doing something. But they were still complaining. They complained and complained and God was changed, saying to them, change your attitude. You have a bad attitude. And I can't stand your attitude. You realize that the attitude of the Israelites made them suffer in the wilderness. The Bible said throughout their journey, through 40 years, the shoes that they were wearing did not wear out. Their clothes were renewed every day. God made sure the provisions were there, but they didn't even recognize that. So what, what is God supposed to do? He just want to say, change your attitude. We must learn from their mistakes that complaining and complaining does not achieve anything. God wants us to work through faith. Do you know that the reservoir of water was in the rock, but they didn't want to do anything about it? Moses had to go and strike the rock and the water came up. You know, people who complain don't work at solutions. Because it's very easy to complain if you don't have anything to do with it. If you don't bring out any solution, you can just complain and, and you know, for somebody else to take the responsibility. Romans chapter 4 says, we should have faith. We should call the things that be not as if they were. We should believe that God exists and is a rewarder of them that believe in his faith. God the Israelites lacked faith. They lacked unbelief. They were living in distrust concerning the promises of God. The children of Israel, they sealed their own faith because they were unwilling to change their pessimistic, complaining attitude. And it caused them a loss. Half, almost none of them entered their promised land. Do you know that Complaining weakens your resolve. This morning when I preached the sermon, somebody gave me um, a demonstration. And Ian, if you want to come forward, I'll show you <coughs> something about an illustration about people who complain. And uh, you stand here, stand in front of me, and face me. And put your hand out. I hope I'm, not, I'm going to be able to do what the, See why somebody teach you something? Sometimes, if it's not from you, it, it can go terribly, terribly wrong, you know. But the attitude is, you, if I'm pushing your hand, you have to push back, okay? But before you do that, tell me, I can do it. I can't do it. I, I, I'm not that good. Not that good. I'm up to nothing. Yeah, not okay, very good. So, let's try it again now. Try and push it. Hey, the guy is strong, though. <laughs> So now you can push it. Now begin to say to yourself, there's nothing I can do. Keep saying that. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> okay, now see? <laughs> you see, that said, because you said there's nothing you can do and you can't stand it, you weren't able to push back. You see, go back, go back to yourself. He's a strong man. But the attitude is, when we complain, it weakens our resolve. Even things that we can do, we're not able to do because we feel inferior. We begin to say, oh, baby, you're not to no good, and, 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 and this and that, and this and that. And like uh, Mark Twain said, 80% of the people don't care about your complaints. And 20% think you deserve it. So who is going to listen? The Bible says that do all things without murmuring and complaining. Do all things without grumbling or fault finding. We need to train ourselves to walk by faith. Because if something has to be done, instead of complaining about it, we can take the responsibility. Do you know that the Israelites were being taken from the, their Egypt into their promised land? But because of complaining, a lot of them, only Joshua and Caleb entered their promised land. God is also taking us into our promised land. We may be in the wilderness, wilderness of this world. 
where there may be things that are going wrong in our lives or things that we don't have, things that we want that we don't receive. But that shouldn't let us um, deny God of his blessings or deny that he's blessed us. You see, when you look into your life, you will see you are blessed. The Bible says, uh, it's not the Bible, I think there's a song where it says, count your blessings and name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done for you. The Israelites, their life was filled with so many miracles, but they, didn't, they, they never paid attention. When one problem happens, they just complain and complain and complain. And so complaining does not help us to connect with God <coughs> and to see his goodness. God wants us to take responsibility. You know, there are some people who always, you know, they come to you and they say, fix me. They are not going to lift one finger. They want you to fix me. There are some people that you call nobody at home. You know? Maybe they have a house. The, the lawn has to be mowed. The place has to be tied up. But they're not going to do it. They'll just complain the weather is bad. And, and when the weather changes, they still don't, doesn't do it. You know, and they say, well, fix me. Or they, they, they attribute whatever solution to something else. And they complain about it. They complain about it. Instead, God wants us to fill our mouth with positive things. Things that will edify us. Things that would encourage us. Things that make us live in, in content. Otherwise, we'll end up in the same predicament like the Israelites. We'll not accomplish the things God wants us to accomplish. God has brought us far. He's brought us. He's taken care of us since we were a little baby up to this time. And his blessings are manifold. Just pay attention to his blessings. And, and like the Israelites, let us, if there's something we can do, let's fix it. Let's try and do it without complaining or without groaning or without moaning. And let us have a heart of gratitude unto the Lord for all his blessings. We don't have to be in the camp of the Israelites who complain all the time and never receive the benefits that God has restored. Please bow your heads with me. Today there may be something on your heart that you want to vent or share with God and say, Lord, I, I need this or I want this or I need this. But first of all, think of all that God has done for you and give Him thanks in your heart. Take a moment to give Him thanks. Lord, as the choir sang this morning, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Because of what the Lord has done, give thanks. Lord, we give you thanks for all your benefits, for all your provisions. Lord, we know that there are times in our life that we want this or we want that. And we feel that our life is not complete because we need something. But help us to know that you have surrounded us with miracles, with your blessings. Help us to live in faith each day, trusting in you fully, because you are our God, and you're never going to leave us or forsake us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, in our time of